in this lecture we are going to learn about domain and range of functions okay so we will learn about functions and related to function what is domain and what is range so let's take a very simple function that is fx is equal to let's say 4 minus x okay so this is the function now i want to find the domain of this function okay so what is domain domain of a function fx is the value of x for which fx is defined okay so domain is the values of x for which fx is defined so now we know that okay square root of so for a function f of z is equal to root z this is defined only if z is greater than equal to 0 okay so in our case this function will be defined if 4 minus x is greater than equal to 0 which implies x minus 4 is less than equal to 0 or x is less than equal to 4 so this is the set of values of x for which this function fx is defined so we call this as the domain so domain of fx is minus infinity to 4 okay so that's the case so we can think of domain in terms of let's have some function so this is the domain and let's say this is the range okay so what happens is so if in domain we have set of points okay in r and we have some set of points here in the range okay so fx is a mapping between numbers in domain to number in the range okay and for each value in domain so we will have only one unique value in the range so that's the point so here is the mapping like this okay so for one value in domain we have a unique value in the range okay but what might happen is two values in the domain might go to the same value in the range so for example fx is equal to x square so now the domain is anything the domain of this is minus infinity to infinity and we see that if x is equal to minus 2 f of minus 2 is minus 2 square which is 4 and x is equal to plus 2 so f of 2 is also 2 square which is 4 so we see that okay 2 and minus 2 both map to the same value 4 okay but the other way it cannot be that okay that this it should have a unique value so okay so fx should be unique so it means what that there should be no point which should be in domain that should be pointing to two different values so it should not happen like this this is wrong okay so this is the importance of domain so let's calculate it for one more function so y is equal to 1 by x so we see that this is defined only if x is not equal to 0 so this is the domain minus infinity to 0 and union 0 to infinity okay so this we will take some more examples okay so one or two more examples we can see and let's see so i will take one example here so one simple example is let's see so it is like f of x is root of x minus 1 plus root of 6 minus x so we want to find the domain of this function so what will it be 
so we have this function so it's composed of fx is composed of f of 1x and f of 2x so now both should be defined okay so root x minus 1 is defined if x minus 1 is greater than equal to 0 or x is greater than equal to 1 6 minus x is root under 6 minus x is defined if 6 minus x is greater than equal to 0 or x minus 6 is less than 0 equal to 0 so x is less than equal to 6 so now it should be defined for both of them so we find that okay it should be intersection of x should be greater than equal to 1 and x should be less than equal to 6 so 1 comma 6 so this is the domain let's try one more question so if our question is let's say another one is f of x is 1 by root under mod of x minus x okay so if this is the question so we will again it's a piecewise definition so mod x is equal to x if x is greater than equal to 0 is equal to minus x if x is less than 0 so what happens fx is equal to 1 by 1 by root under minus x minus x is equal to 1 by minus 2x if x is less than 0 okay so in this case what we see if x is less than 0 this is a positive quantity so here it is always defined and for x is greater than 0 what happens this becomes 1 by root under x minus x which is 1 by root 0 so it is not defined at all for x is greater than 0 so its domain is minus infinity to 0 ok so domain is this so this way we see that what is domain of a function ok so I hope you understand what is domain of a function in the next class we will learn about range thanks a lot